Hello everyone! Welcome to The Secrets of Calculus. Is this video too long? Here's the formulas. Let me know what you did with that extra free time. Last time, we began a journey into the realm of infinity and discovered that getting infinitely close to something is the same as equaling that same something, when it's most convenient. We helped the function g of x equals 2x times x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. We helped this function join the function party because the host didn't define continuity very well. Now let's see if the function f of x equals 1 over x minus 1 can join the party. Here, the forbidden value is x equals 1, but this time it's for a good reason. There's no cancellation we can do to escape the inevitable. Plugging in x equals 1 will cause you to divide by 0. Can the limit help? Of course it can. Let's see what happens when x gets closer to 1. Well, that's interesting. As x approaches 1, y gets absolutely enormous. But we can clearly see that it does matter which direction we're approaching x equals 1. Well, here I must reveal the unfortunate truth that limits can be rather limited. And only find one answer. However, this limit can be kind of like a hydra. So, here's how you split up a limit. How does this help us? The limit as x approaches 1 from above will only be dealing with the values related to 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, and so on. The limit as x approaches 1 from below will only be dealing with the values related to 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, so on. If the, and if the above and below terminology is going to start confusing you, just turn the paper 90 degrees counterclockwise. See? Above, below. Since the approaches from above calculations get ludicrously big in the positive y direction, we can logically conclude that at 1.0 repeating 1, the limit will equal infinity. And since the approaches from below calculations get ludicrously big in the negative y direction, we can logically conclude that 0 0.9 repeating, the limit will equal negative infinity. Now, if we were, com if we were to combine the results together, we would actually get that since infinity and negative infinity are not equal, the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x minus 1 does not exist. It would return two different values, and the limit can only exist if it can handle 1. Now, if we could combine the two results together, we would get the rather outrageous result that 1 divided by 0 is positive or negative infinity. But just remember what we had to do. The, this zero is not really zero. Just like infinity is not really a number, this zero and infinity are used as notational shorthand to say that as the denominator gets closer to zero, the answer gets bigger in the positive or negative directions depending on whether the, 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 whether the denominator is positive or negative. Yikes, what a mouthful. But unfortunately, this does mean that f of x equals 1 over x minus 1 cannot get the limit stamp of approval. And, or the limit seal of approval, and cannot join the function party. Once you reach negative infinity, you have to pick up the pencil and move up to positive infinity to keep drawing the graph. Or, I guess it could go onto the paper, but even with taking the pencil analogy way too literally, the sharp edges of the paper prevent you from pulling off the sorcery. But now, 1 over x squared can join, and so can natural log of absolute value of x. Don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. For the 1 over x squared case, 0 is the forbidden value. So we see if the limit from, from above and below are equal. And we can see that since the pattern can be assumed to continue, we can say that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared equals infinity. Because the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive and negative directions are equal to each other. So this limit does exist. How nice. This function gets the limit seal of approval because the difference between 0 and 0, 0.0 repeating 1 is so small that no pencil can pick up on the difference, even though doing this might feel like snowboarding on the event horizon of a black hole. Nonetheless, we've 
guy in a semi declared that this pencil cannot go to infinity, so it's totally fine. For the natural log of absolute value of x case, you can probably see why it needs the absolute values. The forbidden value is less obvious, but it's zero. And because of these absolute values, we can take our first steps into what I call big braining the answer. That is, and these first steps are ignoring the approach from below because it is the same as approaching from above because of those absolute values. Here we can see that as x approaches 0, y approaches negative infinity. Although, sure takes its time doing that, doesn't it? Later on, natural log will actually be giving us some trouble, specifically because it grows so slowly that it can seem to approach something finite. Okay, we need to reassess. Turns out, much of the functions are a rambunctious bunch, so we need to come up with a better way to describe continuity. Ideally, this would allow in the party functions like g of x equals 2x of 2x times x minus 1 divided by x minus 1, where x is not allowed to equal 1. It should be allowed to pair up with functions like g2 of x equals 2 if x equals 1. Now, usually when we do this pairing, we put curly brackets around the functions involved, and I personally prefer putting having the curly brackets on both sides. This new definition should also leave out infinity as a valid answer because allowing it makes mathematicians incredibly uneasy. Now this is your turn. See if you can find that definition. Here's a hint. Start by describing being continuous at a point, which will definitely involve limits, and work out continuity of a function based on that. Find the answer in the next video.